And I would urge the Singapore government not to lead the nation in taking the Green Pledge. And why, why should they not take the Green Pledge? Because the Green Pledge is against the National Pledge. This is a very famous example. So Sri Lanka, they do away with commercial fertilizer. They do away with commercial fat, uh, pesticides. Okay, they go full organic in one year. And within a year, the whole economy collapsed. Okay. The economy collapse. Yeah, because 70% of the economy is uh, uh, agriculture related. Wow, okay. So they can't produce enough food. They used to be an exporter. They become importer. There's not enough food to go around. The whole economy literally collapsed. So <laughs> if you want a country to crash immediately, you go full ESG. Hey guys, and welcome to yet another episode of the Singaplex After Hours Podcast. And today we have someone very interesting in our midst today. He calls himself Fearless Wing Chun. Yes, uh, and I'm starting the uh, energy humanist movement against environmentalism. So that's uh, some pretty strong words, uh, Fearless Wing Chun. What exactly is an uh, energy humanist? That, uh, that's what you call yourself, right? And, and so what, what is this whole movement about? We recognise, or I recognise, in order for humanity to do well, to progress well, if we're interested in human proce- uh, progress, we need cheap, reliable and plentiful forms of energy and that comes in a form of fossil fuels. Really? That but, comes in a form of fossil fuels. But isn't the like the mainstream narrative now that the whole world is moving towards uh, electric power, we're going to have Tesla cars, flying vehicles and things like that. So you, you mean renewables? Yeah, renewables. So renewables over the last 30 years, the technology has uh, improved Okay. Compared to itself, but comparatively with fossil fuels, there's no comparison. Fossil fuels is there's still no comparison. The, no comparison. It's still the most efficient form of energy. When you mean by efficient, what do you actually really mean by? Uh, efficient, efficient means like, uh, for example, reliability. Okay. Like uh, when the sun don't shine, when the wind don't blows, your solar panels and windmills don't work. For every solar panels or windmills you add to the grid, you're only adding to the cost of electricity. The cheapest form of energy is fossil fuels, natural gas, coal, and oil. But isn't like the main theory that has been drilled into us since young that one day the world will run out of oil? Oh, indeed. Yeah. There has been a lot of uh, resource catastrophe predictions okay. since uh, 1970. 1970? Sh- yes. Since 1970. That's 50 years ago. 50 years ago. So, for your information, the environmentalist movement started in 1970, and since then, uh, there has been numerous predictions on the resource, catastroph- resource catastrophe. La. One day, oil will, uh, run out. oil will run out, coal will run out, natural gas will run out. But, 200 or 400 years, I don't know. But what I know is that the path towards 2100, 200 years from now, or 400 years from now, the path towards there, we need the most efficient form of energy to Continue surviving. transit into a cleaner form of energy, okay. which very likely at this point would be nuclear power. Really? Definitely. No shit. Nuclear power. Yeah, nef- definitely not solar, definitely not wind. But with like you know, things like Fukushima or like Godzilla, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, okay. right. So, so uh, aren't we like worried that we will run out of sashimi to eat one day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think the world has a big misunderstanding on nuclear power. Uh, the technology f- of nuclear power is very different from nuclear bomb. Uh, those disasters, those disasters can be avoided. I can, be avoided. Can, can be avoided but um, people people will still have a aversion to staying near a nuclear power plant right yeah so so it's a process and, and I'm not saying that we should change to nuclear p- power Overnight. immediately next year okay or five years or ten years uh, for countries to go into nuclear uh, there's a steep learning curve Le- steep learning curve l- let me put it to you this way but uh, while on our way there we should use cheap form of energy that comes in the form of fossil fuels so that they can get their prosperity fast. You're, you're saying that um, societies or countries should still leverage on the cheap uh, option of fossil fuel so that they can grow their economies to a point whereby it makes it feasible for them, for to, them to transit, to, transit nuclear. to nuclear or any other form of energy. 
Yes. And because why why should they not take the green pledge? Because the green pledge is against the national pledge. So why are countries taking the green pledge if it's against their well, national it's, interest? It's, it's because of uh, optics or PR. It's optics, it's PR. And, and the main thing is that they don't realise the ideology at play. We've crossed the 8 billion population line, right? Mm-hmm. So out of these 8 billion people, uh, 3 billion of them use less electricity than a refrigerator. Yeah, uh, but the human person per yeah. person per person uses less electricity, electricity than a refrigerator. Than a refrigerator every month. Every month. Yeah, they use less electricity than a refrigerator. So three billion of them. Guys, if you really want to stop climate change, go back and kill your refrigerator. <laughs> no more ice cubes and ice cream for you. No, but but the point is that your bakwa will rot. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, the point is that we should appreciate that yeah. we, we have our, technology. Our lives is being elevated by cheap energy. Our lives is being made prosperous due to due to cheap fossil fuels. You tell an environment this good news, they are they are very unhappy. They're very yeah, unhappy. Yeah, that's that, that's the easiest way, right? That's the limit test, right? Uh, <laughs> this person pro human or not? You tell them a good piece of good news, lah. Then they get upset. They they cringe, lah. Yeah. They cringe. They cringe. So, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, what can I say? Doomsday messaging has gotten uh, too loud. Yes, too loud. And it has always been there. And he has uh, evolved into this uh, new uh, mental health issue called uh, you're called saying uh, climate, climate anxiety. Climate anxiety. Yeah. So do you think uh, cutting down on toilet paper by using water to wash our asses will save Mother Earth? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, toilet paper is okay, guys. <laughs> toilet paper has passed the the test here. Where was your starting point where you realized that you were very interested in being a, a energy a humanist? I didn't come up with the term myself. Hmm. Uh, Alex Epstein did it, so he he called. Who's Alex Epstein? For, Alex, for people who don't know, not not Jeffrey Epstein, they only off yeah. himself. Yeah. So he's a he's a person who wrote this book called the his first book was called the Moral Case for Fossil Fuels. The Moral Case for Fossil yeah, Fuels. The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels, okay. and this logo is 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 his design. Uh, his second book is called uh, Fossil Future. Fossil future. Yeah. So how the use of fossil fuel would lead us to a good future, a better future, a better future. Uh, of course, I'm I'm also inspired by uh, Bjorn Lomborg. He wrote this book called False Alarm. False Alarm. Yeah. False Alarm. F A L S E. False yeah. Alarm. Yeah. And and there's a few other books. Um, uh, Zubin who wrote this book called Merchant of Despair. Merchant of this. That's the book that convinced me that uh, environmentalism is anti-human. So, uh, this Robert Zubin, he wrote, he called the environmentalists merchants of despair. They are selling despair. Selling despair. So he tracked he tracked the um, environmentalist movement from seventies until now. He tracked all the arguments. A layman. I'm 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 not I'm, I'm not a scientist. A layman who spends a bit of time reading, and then slowly. Uh, Analyzing and all this, you you can get this. You you can know this. You can open your own eyes, you know, and all that. What is ESG actually, and why why has this become a, a mainstay in the? In okay, the, so ESG yeah. is is uh it stands for environmental, social, and governance. So what it basically means is that uh at a corporate level, at a big corporate level, they want to use corporate governance to to uh, make the company more environmentally friendly and also push down all the uh, left-wing thinking ideas to the social part. What do you think is the incentive for, for management in s- such companies where they, per- where, where they uh, pursue ESG? The reason I may be wrong is that uh, they don't want to focus so much on making profits because making profits is hard <laughs> making profit is really hard. Making uh, making real profits. <laughs> real profits is, is freaking hard. Okay. Um, so if you focus on something else and you you so, want so to be so, nice, so you say ESG is like the smoke bomb. Yes, they, ESG they is like to smoke distract bomb. from the real thing. It, yes, the real pursuit of of what the company. Yes, the be. the priority of the company is to make profits. So ESG is just a corporate smoke screen, and. ESG at the at the 
country level, this is a very famous example. So Sri Lanka, they do away with commercial fertilizer. They do away with commercial fat, uh, pesticides. Okay, they go full organic in one year, and the ESG in score, yeah, wow. in ESG scores shoot up. So, so, so they, they, they got the, the nice looking metrics of ESG going. Yeah, so it shoot up to almost perfect 98.1% ESG score. And within a year, uh, the whole economy collapsed. Okay. The economy collapsed. Yeah, because 70% of the economy is uh, oh, agriculture related. Wow, okay. So they can't produce enough food. They used to be an exporter. They become importer. There's not enough food to go around. The whole economy literally collapsed. You cannot blame... Uh, the, the government corruption for this because if, if you want government corruption right government corruption won't, won't make a country crash within one year or not, right if, if you look at Malaysia it's been around for what uh, 30 years it's, it's, it's still corruption but it's a slow time <laughs> right but if you want dangerous uh, dangerous commentary <laughs> so if you want a country to crash immediately you go full ESG so you say ESG is people are going full retard yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, no, I mean, so, I mean, the, the Sri Lanka example is, uh, uh, you guys can look it up. Uh, it, it's a very famous example of how oh, ESG oh. gone wrong. ESG gone wrong. Yeah. So, so, with ESG going so wrong, why is there uh, still such a push? Because, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm not like a big time investor, but I look at some of my investment apps, right? They say that. <laughs> Now uh, they're pushing something. Now I see a lot of like ESG buzzwords in all these apps, right? What's going on? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know why, but uh, I, I, I won't take into account those ESG ratings or what. Because I know that uh, our political leaders f- flies to climate conferences. And the last climate conference you have... 800 planes landing on that climate conference so uh, somehow they are, them flying is more important than me so, so I don't care about all this <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's, it's rank hypocrisy right Be- just because they slap a label on themselves to say that they are saving the world they can they, they, they can do the carbon emissions but you cannot to, to, to go for a holiday because the peasants or, can't uh, the peasants can't so, so this is this is really the social disparity. Uh, so so you're, you're, more, you're actually as a um, energy humanist, uh, this, uh, the so-called like classist um, uh, 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 categorization of uh, who deserves to be an environmentalist and who yeah. deserves to be shamed is, is what you're really against. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, that is the scientist, mm. that is the politician, that is the media. So in this uh, game of telephone, so uh, something that's not so... It's like pass the message down. So as, yeah. as the message gets passed down, it gets more distorted and it gets exaggerated. More distor- exaggerated. Or, or would you say the message has been sensationalized? Of course, of course. It has. I mean, that's the bread and butter of media, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have, we have all been uh, so uh, a new uh, doomsday message to, to, to subscribe to. If you think about the mental health, uh, it's tiring. It's tiring. If you, if you look at all this uh, catastrophic uh, news, I would say it's very tiring. This is why... So, so you're, you're saying it's affecting the human psyche to be bombarded by all these doomsday messages. Yes, yes. And this uh, latest uh, mental condition called uh, climate anxiety. Climate anxiety. Yeah, that's, such yeah. a, that's a, such a condition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the young people, they yeah, are yeah. very anxious that the world is coming to an end. And so, so, so they will change, throw all the plastic at home into paper. No, I, I don't know. So, so they seek help. So, so they go to their string, they go to their therapist really? yeah, and say that, oh, I'm, I'm suffering from climate anxiety. So, you know, so, you, oh, so you're saying that um, this uh, climate alarmist, the trickle-down effect in the media and the, all the doomsday messaging has resulted in... Uh, worse mental health. Worse mental health, or especially in young people. Yeah. Don't suppress that, that independent voice inside you and spend a bit of time uh, looking into this to form I can, a personal opinion I, and, and, and I can share with you my resources just don't go along with the uh, flow uh, what the media is telling you about climate catastrophe only for this thing or only for this subject so uh, and, and the, the point I want to come back is that independent thinking requires courage 
it, mm. could, it requires a bit of courage. So I am, I am I, hopefully that I'm leading this uh, small movement in Singapore to, to tell people that it's safe to think independently. To, to mm. go against to, to, to go against the flow and and I can do a bit of research to to substantiate mm. my narrative mm. or whatever it is against the popular narrative yeah so yeah. I, I feel that um, besides this whole uh, you know debate on on both sides of the spectrum regarding uh, climate change, uh, green movement, so on and so forth. There are many uh, stakeholders and actors uh, across both sides, right? So, so would you say that actually the main issue now in the media is that um, uh, it is always uh, overly slanted to one side? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yes. such that uh, people uh, develop this uh, so, sort of, uh, which is ironic, right? Because in, in a world where supposedly uh, information is uh, more abundant mm -hmm. and accessible than ever, there seems to be a, a growing trend towards uh, fashionable thinking. Oh yes, and f fashionable thinking is 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 very dangerous. It's, it's not thinking. It's just it's just conformity, right? There's no fashionable thinking. Is it's just conformity. It's just conformity, yeah. right? It's like you slap an ESG label on yourself, or you slap a sustainability label on yourself, and I and I think that's dangerous because the mind does not grow. The 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 only place where the mind grows is when it's challenged. In the future. Everyone will be, will will live longer, will live, live, longer. live better lives. That that's my view of of where the world is heading. Oh, so you feel that humanity is actually, despite all the doom porn out there, humanity <laughs> is actually moving towards a brighter future. Yes, exactly. And you have to recognize that all this ism, all this ideology, has practical consequences on your life. So you're saying that people should not just treat whatever view they are having on the internet as a trend to express, but rather that particular philosophy actually impacts their real life offline. Yeah, how it plays out. How it plays out in the real world. In the in real reality. World. Yeah, you, you you should do an Excel table on 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 ideologies. Excel table on <laughs> ideologies, <laughs> right? With that, we thank Fearless Wing Chun for his time here and sharing a very interesting take on uh, energy humanism right here on the Singaplex After Hours podcast. Till next time, see you. Like and subscribe.